And we'll just do a short period of meditation just to help you hopefully achieve some calm and peace and improve your mindfulness or at the very least to see what the challenges are in practicing with your own mind because you might find it's quite hard to be mindful. So find a, to begin with, find a posture that you feel comfortable to hold. The Buddha's instruction is to sit up straight. That will help. You don't have to be, make yourself feel tense or painful, but try to put energy to sit up straight because that will help, help you not to fall asleep. <laughs> if you slouch like I used to when I first began meditation, if you slouch down, shoulders down, it's very easy to fall asleep. So try to sit up straight just as you might do in yoga or other kind of um, physical activities like that. Sit up straight and close your eyes so that you can start to bring your attention inwards to your own body as you're sitting right here, right now. And as a simple way to establish mindfulness in the present moment, <coughs> You've closed your eyes, you're sitting up straight, bring your attention to the top of your head. So just notice how the top of your head feels right now. The air, the feeling, the sensation of the air on your skin, on your head, on your face. And notice any tension in your body, in the muscles, and try to consciously relax that tension. So your jaw muscles, the cheek muscles, just notice how they're feeling, but relax if you need to relax. And continue to pass your attention down through your body Notice how your shoulders are. I just had a very good massage, so my shoulder hurts. <laughs> Sometimes massage make, brings up things. Or maybe you're somebody who sits at <coughs> a computer all day and now you're noticing how you hunch up your back or Tense your muscles in one part of your back or your neck. Sometimes people have pain in their neck from the way they lie down at night when they sleep. You might notice some of these things. Or just the feeling of the air on your skin. Warm air, cold air. The feeling of your clothing, you might realize you've put something on that's too tight, it's uncomfortable. Or maybe too heavy, makes you feel hot. And continue to send your attention down your body. I notice your chest, your stomach. Any tension, you might relax. Send your attention down your arms to your hands. And I'd recommend just putting one hand on top of the other hand in your lap. But notice how your fingers are. Whether there's any tension in the fingers, in the arm muscles. And come, coming back to your stomach, your waist, relaxing down to your legs. Do you notice any tension in your thighs or in your legs going down to the feet? Maybe you might feel pressure because of the weight of your body on the ground. So 
if I could just where there's pressure or even pain down to your toes maybe for some people this is the very first time in their whole life that they've actually sent their consciousness their awareness to their toes normally you you wouldn't think of it you wouldn't do it but now you are you're getting to know your own toes as they are in this situation as you're sitting here and you're not judging your body you're not saying it's a good body or a bad body you're practicing developing awareness mindfulness of your body as it's sitting and now you might bring your mind up through your legs back to your waist noticing different sensations try to keep your awareness within your own body don't let your mind wander off to think about home or what you might do tomorrow just keep observing the sensations the feelings within your body the skin the muscles your posture as you're sitting here coming back up to the chest the shoulders and the neck back up to the face and the top of the head so we call this body sweeping sweeping your attention slowly down through your body and then slowly back up and the aim is not to let your mind wander outside And Jen Cha used to say that the foreign monks like myself come to stay and practice in Thailand. He said, You've done a lot of traveling around the world. Now it's time to travel around your own body. Learning to keep your attention, your mindfulness within your own body. And the next step is to find the feeling of the in and out breath. So to help us, you might take a few deep breaths, starting at the tip of your nose. Notice the sensation of the air coming in as you breathe in deeply to fill your lungs. The air begins at the tip of your nostrils, comes up the nose and then down to fill the lungs. And just like when you go to see the doctor and he says take a deep breath, and he's measuring your lung capacity and your heart. You take the deep breath, notice the air coming in. So you're mainly just finding the sensation of the breath the air on your skin inside your nose maybe or the movement of your lungs expanding with this long in breath and then below your abdomen uh, below your lungs the abdomen rising up with the in breath and then there's a pause and the out breath begins the abdomen falls down again the, the lungs deflate and the out breath goes out through the nose to the nostrils if you do this a lot and you keep your attention with the breathing you probably notice that the air coming out of your body is generally a little warmer than the air coming in. And you'll start to notice 
if you now let your breathing just go at its own pace, you don't have to make it long or short, just let it go naturally, but you'll notice how naturally long or short your breath is. So sometimes when we have been exercising, the breath is short. Sometimes when we're very peaceful, the breath becomes very long and refined. So even in the course of one meditation, it can change. But to notice that change, you have to keep paying attention to the feeling of the in-breath and the out-breath. Once you start thinking about other things, you've lost it, it's gone. But each time you notice your mind wandering away, catch yourself, remind yourself, this is not the time to think about those other things. This is the time to practice mindfulness of breathing, like the Buddha. And your simple task is just to know the breath. From the start of the breath, as it comes in, to the middle of the breath where there's a pause and then the outward breath until it's completely gone out from your body. And now you're more aware of the passage of your in-breath and your out-breath you can settle your attention on just one spot, one location. I would suggest the tip of your nostrils, but you can also try the chest if you find that more comfortable, or the abdomen. But once you've chosen your one location to watch the breath, that's where you're aiming to keep your awareness from moment to moment to moment. So if it's the tip of the nostrils, you'll just keep bringing your mind back to that one place. You no longer have to follow the breath in or out. And you're just keeping your mindfulness there at the tip of your nostrils. Your aim is not to let distractions take over the mind and make you lose concentration. So maybe you hear the sound of people moving, or you have a sensation in your body, a bit of pain or an itch, or you start thinking about something else. And your challenge is not to pay much attention, not to give much importance to these other distracting thoughts or sounds or feelings. Just to keep coming back to the breath over and over again. That's why we call it mindfulness of breathing, anapanasati. You're paying attention, keeping your attention with the breathing. So everything else takes second place. And if you do lose your awareness and you start thinking of something else, once you realize what you've done, just guide your mind back to the tip of the nostrils. You need the same kind of patience as a parent, a loving parent would have for their restless child or baby that just wants to keep crawling around, moving around. You have to keep an eye on them all the time, and bring them back into the room to be close to you because there's danger if you leave them alone. For your mind, the danger is you'll just get lost into daydreaming, thinking about things endlessly, or falling asleep.
And the Buddha already um, reminded us the most important and the most useful quality you can develop is mindfulness. It's always useful to us, always helpful. We can never really have too much mindfulness. Or as Ajahn Chah said, when you lose your mindfulness of the breathing and you get lost in your moods, in your thinking, without anyone guiding the mind, it's like you can go crazy for five minutes. If you're unmindful for five minutes, you can think anything. Your mind can do or think anything, go anywhere. But it's no longer under your control. So for the last part of this meditation, I'll stop talking and just try to keep gently bringing your attention back to the breath and don't let yourself give in to the daydreaming, the wandering mind, the thinking. Try to keep alert and stay with the breath until you hear my sound for the end of the session. <coughs> 